Hey guys, Max Nate 2. Welcome back to another tryout. Today's tryout is on two games, Godfall Challenger Edition and the standalone version of Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep, I think is the name of the game. So, the reason that I'm here today talking about this in particular is I run this Twitter account called Games with Gold versus PlayStation Plus, where I compare the monthly Games with Gold and PlayStation Plus games and give them my own, like, personal rating based on my opinion for the most part, but also sort of value and, you know, just a couple different little things that I just think matter in this concept. There's not, like, an official list of the, the thing, but whatever. I make these vi this Twitter account because I didn't see anyone else doing it, and I thought it might be interesting to do, because I have... I've used Games with Gold for a long time, my girlfriend has PlayStation Plus, and so we get both things, and so I end up with both sets of games every month, and it's interesting to look at how poorly the value of Games with Gold has been over the last long while, and how compounded and how that compares to what was offered for PlayStation Plus. And uh, so I started this Twitter account, like, last year, towards the end of last year, just to see how that goes. And over the last couple months, since the end of last year, there have been a couple of games on PlayStation Plus that were either developed by or published by Gearbox that have been controversial, in my opinion, to be put on the service. And so I figured I would just make a video to complain, but also talk about the games a little bit. So the first game I'm talking about here was PlayStation Plus for December of 2021. And this was Godfall Challenger Edition, which I had to make like an amendment, amended tweet to my typical thing because I didn't realize it was just not the full game. And I'll get into that in a moment. So this game was published by Gearbox, and I can't remember what the developer's name was, but they made this live service hack and slash looter, not shooter type of thing. I really just don't get why they gave out Challenger Edition. So if you don't know what this is, it's not the game. This gives you a level 50 character, a max level character, and lets you play the end game, post game content. My assumption is that this was some attempt to boost multiplayer numbers, but uh, it doesn't seem to have worked. I, I tried to play online a little bit and there wasn't anyone, so no idea what that's about. I guess nobody's playing Godfall because why would they? So how this works is you play the prolonged tutorial thing that I believe is just the normal start of the game, and then you finish that, it brings you into your, like, hub base thing where you would access your missions and do all of the, the stuff that you would do, and it boosts you level 50, and then you're locked out of the rest of the story, and if you want to play the story, you gotta spend $15 to buy the story back. And maybe that would, like, get people to play the story, the like, buy-in, but, like, I don't think the game is that good. Like, I played, I again, I didn't play more than that prologue tutorial section. I was like, okay, I'll play some more if I can get into matchmaking, and then I couldn't get into matchmaking, so I didn't play anymore. So I, I only have, like, a, t a taste of the basics, but it just doesn't really feel that great to play. Like, your attacks don't smoothly run into each other very well. I, there's just something about it that just feels excessively heavy. And I think part of the fact comes from not having a dedicated jump button, despite having a whole button on the controller that doesn't do anything. Like, the circle button doesn't do anything in-game besides, like, interact with things. And some of the interactions you do is jumping gaps. Like, little gaps that are, like, scripted to be jumped over. So it's like, it's just, the game just feels clunky and heavy. And some of the UI doesn't look as polished as it could. Like, there's this sense that 
this was being developed as more of like a lower budget game, not like the big AAA thing that it's been tried to be played off as. But then they slapped that like really shiny coat of paint on it that I think personally can make the game hard to visually parse the way that it, the visual design is. But like they slap and it looks nice. They slap this shiny coat of paint on it. It looks nice, but then like it looks like it's supposed to be in a higher class of game than it is. It's just not there. Like, personally, do you want a hack and slash type thing? Dev May Cry, Bayonetta, and their ilk. High class hack and slash games by people who are highly experienced in it and have very satisfying systems and are widely celebrated. Go play those instead. I mean, if you're a fan of hack and slash games, you probably have, so... That's not, like, the best recommendation, but, like, this is not... You're not going to get any of that here in Godfall. If you want to play a live service, looter, whatever type of thing, Destiny exists. Destiny is, like, the perfected version of that. Like, people rag on Destiny because of what it is, but Destiny is, like, the perfected version of the live service looter shooter. There's also Warframe, too. Warframe is great. It's a free alternative to Destiny if you don't want to pay for Destiny. Though Destiny is technically free now. But like, there's also war for, like, there are better games to get the looter shooter situation. There are better games to do hack and slash. There might not be better games for both together, but do you want both together? I feel like those are two, generally two different audiences. I don't understand. I don't understand. Overall, honestly, though, the worst part about Godfall Challenger Edition is the fact that it's just not the full game. You're just not getting large portions of the game. And the way that it shows, like, the thing is, like, oh, if you want the full Godfall experience, buy the story. But, like, you're obviously packaging it in the end game as if the story doesn't matter to begin with. Like, you wouldn't give me this character where I'm now able to play post-game content that uh, that most, as far as I should understand it, that stuff takes place after the end of the story, game story. D does If the story matters, then why are you giving me spoilers for the story as if... Like, this doesn't make sense. Like, th wh what? Okay, hey, the... the, per the, the, the Experience you want to have is to play the story, but uh, also play post game content instead, please. We're just gonna give you that. Uh, it's cheaper. Do do that, please. I'm like what? Like why give me the post game and then try to tell me the story is this big important thing when it's obviously not that important to whoever marketed or created this product, put it out to have it put out there, like. I'm the type that takes blame for bad decisions like this and paces it on the publisher because publishers make a lot of decisions. So, was this Gearbox that was like, hey, we Godfall's not performing well, cut the, we'll make a version where we can just give people the multiplayer part because we need those monthly active users and that, and that stuff. And we'll just, we can sell them back the, we can sell them back the story if they want it, but give out that that multiplayer part we need those monthly active users we don't care if the, the post game content technically takes place after this like whose idea was this why i just feel like this is some sort of blatant cash grab where they're like here have the part that gives us regular players and if you want give us money for the rest of it and i don't get why Sony, uh, besides, you know, being given money for that, I don't know why Sony would, like, advertise this or put this on their thing and be like, yeah, Godfall Challenger Edition, that's great. Like, I know that Godfall was heavily marketed with the PS5. It's like, next gen, ooh, we're here. But And then shortly after was like, well, it's also on the PS4 if you want it, I guess. Like... I don't know, the whole situation about Godfall just is, is like, did anyone want this? Like, somebody obviously had to have, like, wanted to make it, but, like, was that person still there when the product was done?
You know? Like, I imagine, like, not everyone who worked on that project is satisfied with this outcome. Where it, you know, had some misleading marketing. It, you know, has been very poorly received. Like, Godfall, I assume, is just a disappointment overall. I don't know. Like, why did Sony put this in the spotlight? Because all it did was bring more controversy in the direction of Godfall. If Sony had instead, like, or Gearbox or whoever makes this decision, had instead just given the full version of Godfall, people probably just wouldn't have noticed the fact that there is a version purchasable that is just the post-game. And that they will sell you back the, the rest of the game for $15. People probably wouldn't have just, would have just not noticed. They would have been like, oh, cool. I guess I have Godfall now. And then went on with their lives. But since they specifically pointed out this version, which is, yeah, to purchase only $15. And then another $15 if you want the, the story mode or whatever. Something like that. It's not the full game. It's not the full game. I don't I don't understand. And supposedly, I, I read this somewhere, if you end up with the Challenger Edition, you can't purchase like the big Ultimate Edition that has all of the content in it. I don't know. Like this is just a weird ploy, marketing ploy that obviously failed hard. I, I mean, to an extent, I am here talking about it. So it does get that. No, no, uh, no press is bad press, as they say or on the inverse, all press is good press. I just, it fails, obviously. I've not said a positive thing about Godfall the whole time I've been here. It fails. But why did they do this? I don't understand. And the other game I was talking, wanted to talk about today, this was part of the PlayStation Plus games for February, so just last month. Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep, the standalone version that's like a Wonderland's one shot or whatever. It's a big marketing ploy for Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, to the point where there is a giant card the moment you open the game where three of the buttons, the three of the face buttons on the controller are like, here's a place to buy, here's a place to buy it. Please buy it, buy the game, please. Look, I get it. You want me to buy the game, I see that. That's the whole thing. This is a, a massive marketing thing where you're like, we'll just re-release the thing that people liked from Borderlands 2 as a standalone, and then it gets given out for free through PlayStation Plus. That's great marketing for our game. And you don't need to put the whole card. It doesn't need to have an option on the menu. You're overselling. You're, you're pushing too far in the marketing department here. You're stepping over the boundaries of the players a little bit. Like, step back. You... you People who want the game have probably are probably gonna buy it. You know, people who like Borderlands are gonna buy it. You don't need to. I don't. I don't understand. What are you doing here? I also don't understand why they made this. Like, the Handsome Collection exists. Uh, this has Borderlands Two and all its DLC in it, which includes Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep. It's got Borderlands 2 and pre-sequel and all their DLC. Generally, you can find this for $20 or less, which is the cost of the standalone digitally. Who is this for? Who is this product for? Like, look, I, I purchased a physical copy. I think I maybe got this one from GameStop. Uh, I've also got a physical copy of the first game, the, the remaster or whatever, that the, the next gen version. I also got a physical copy of Borderlands 3. I haven't played Borderlands 3 at all. Um, I probably spent like $60 for all three of them together. Like, why did you, wh what is the point of Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep or whatever this thing is called being a standalone? Why? Like, there are parts in this expansion that rely on you knowing the story to Borderlands 1 and 2 to an extent. And while the game does give you like a little explanation, if you don't have any sort of background in Borderlands, you're not going to really understand it. This, is, this expansion is highly related to character relationships from 
these two games, well, one and two, where you're not going to properly get that experience if you're just playing this as a standalone. And in addition to that, all the tutorial pop-ups you're getting, l real, like, you're, you're probably going to come into this expansion uh, with, through playing the game normally with, you know, weapons already and being this of, of a proper level. I assume, I don't know if it starts your character over when you start the expansion. I assume it doesn't. That doesn't really make sense. So you have to do the Borderlands character building that you would have already done by the point you're playing this expansion, because I believe this expansion takes place after Borderlands 2 is over, you would already have built your character to a point, like, this doesn't make sense as a standalone. And I don't know who this is supposed to be for. If this is for fans of Borderlands, like, yeah, this this expansion is considered the best part of Borderlands 2, but you probably already have it. You probably either have a copy of Borderlands 2 for like the 360, or you have a copy of the Handsome Collection. You probably already have the this. So this isn't for you. And then for people who are new to the series, you should just play Borderlands 1. Like, just play. If, if, you're, if you're new to the series and you're like, I wonder if I'll like Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Just play Borderlands 1. It's going to be, like, exactly the same in terms of, like, gameplay feel and gameplay loop. You know, there's iterations and, and new things and new classes, but, like... These games are all pretty similar. Like, they're not that different besides having a different group of characters to be your your classes. So, like, if you're new and you're like, I wonder if I'll like Tiny Teach's Wonderland. This exists. This is often very cheap. You could just get this. In fact, I have Xbox 360 copies of these games too. Like, I didn't need to buy these new Xbox One versions of Borderlands because I already had Borderlands 1 and 2. But I figured I might as well so that I have physical copies of them. I have digital Xbox 360 versions. Just play this if you want to start Borderlands. It's easily available on like everything. There, there's no reason to buy this. And for Sony to have, like, placed it on PlayStation Plus as it's like, yeah, this is worth something. It's not really, like, just, if you want to play it, just pick a good copy of Handsome Collection. You'll, you're, you're going to need either the story context of Borderlands 1 or Borderlands 2 to properly understand what's happening in this standalone version of a game expansion. Like... You're, you're not going to totally understand the narrative context unless either you've played one of the games or you looked it up. So I don't, I don't, I can't recommend this. It fails. It fails. I can recommend other, I can recommend at least Borderlands 1 and 2. I've not actually played pre-sequel or 3. I just own them for the sake of owning them. I can recommend the Borderlands games to an extent. I've, I played them a long time ago and I mean... I played quite a bit. I played like an hour and a half or so of Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. And I mean, it's not quite as responsive as I remember Borderlands being, but it's also been, I played it in high school. So it's been a long time. So I've not played them in a long time. So I don't like, at some point I want to make a video on the Borderlands series. I don't know if that will include Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, but like this standalone version of a Borderlands 2 expansion fails its tryout. Is it slightly better than being given Godfall Challenger Edition? Yeah. It's still not a full game. Like, there's probably a decent amount of content in the expansion. It seems like there is. But it's still not a full game. They're charging $20 for a game that you can get 
the full for full version of for twenty dollars pretty easily pretty regularly if they had just given out godfall or the handsome collection which they have if i remember if if i remember from looking up they have given out the handsome collection before so it's probably why they didn't then it's like okay cool but like this is just sort of a weird blatant attempt to be like here's this thing please give us money you know on the, the Godfall side, it's, here, have the post game, please like it and buy the rest of it. And then on the Tiny Tina's uh, Salt on Dragon Keep, it's, here, here's the, the, multi, the, the, here's the game expansion that inspired the new game. Please buy the new game. Please. It's like, you don't need to beg me. Like, Tiny Tina's Salt on Dragon Keep was... Gearbox developed, but 2K published. So maybe this is a publisher thing. Like I said, I'd like to leave blame for stupid marketing and whatnot choices on publishers. Maybe this is a publisher thing, and they were just like, "Yeah, we want to we want to market our new thing by trying to sell you the old thing in a new package for no reason." It's not even like it's got a PS5 version, if I remember correctly. It's just the P. It's just a PS4 game. So like. Handsome Collection exists. Yeah, I'm holding up Xbox copies because that's what I own. But, you know, these were released. These were released on the PlayStation 4, too. Like, in this form. I I do not understand why th this happened. And yes, I personally got them for free. But these are products that are charged for. Pop up the store pages, if I remember correctly, Godfall Challenger Edition is like $15, and Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep, a Wonderland's one-shot, is like $20. These just shouldn't be products, and you shouldn't buy them. Like, if you really want Godfall, just get Godfall. Like, just get Godfall then. Like, I... <sighs> I'm sure it's on sale somewhere. I'm sure you can even pick up a physical copy for like $10. That game flopped. If you really want it, I'm sure it's not that expensive. And if you want to play Tiny Tina's Assault and Dragon Keep, just, just buy, just buy the Handsome Collection. I'm pretty sure the Handsome Collection is just on Game Pass if you have that. Like, I mean, I guess I played these on the PlayStation, so talking to a PlayStation audience. I don't know if they're on like PlayStation Now or anything because I don't have that. I don't get it. I don't get it. Sony shouldn't let these be part of PlayStation Plus games. Like, I could complain about Games with Gold being trash, like, every month. But, like, Games with Gold is trash every month. Like, PlayStation Plus has some months where it's just, like, all fairly recent AAA titles. Like, all fairly recent full-priced $60 AAA titles. And then other, and then other months you get... Godfall Challenger Edition, and other months you get Tiny Tina. I mean, you can't be great all every month, but like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it why you would do this. It's dumb. Anyway, this video is way too long, so if down in the links description, you'll find links in the description. Like the video if you liked it. It's like if you didn't, leave a comment. What did you think about all this? Let me know. Uh, go to the Twitter account. Follow that Twitter account that I have. Uh, share the video. Subscribe. Do the things. Do the things. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye.